What's up YouTube? Today I will be talking about chapter 343 of Fairy Tale, discussing it, talking about future speculation for the storyline and its past events and pretty much just all out discussion on Fairy Tale and on the latest chapter 343 which came out this week along with two other chapters. Yeah, it was like an extravaganza. You do three in one and um, I'm hoping they don't do it again because at first I did and it turned out to be a lot of work. So this is the final chapter, the latest chapter and there's a lot to discuss and there's some stuff that's overarching and we'll go, over, we'll go into the entire story as a whole rather than just this single chapter. So I think it's very important for you guys to stay tuned. So let's begin and I have the, the, the manga on the left just to um, just just to go through a play by play and just so you guys know this there will be no chapter summaries or plot summaries I'm assuming you've already read the chapters to go along with this so first thing to note that I didn't mention in the last video the last panel shows the four members who founded fairy tale we now know who three of them are as mentioned before the fourth is this strange figure who seems to have blonde hair and a slash across his left eye. Now a lot of you might be thinking he is Laxus, which first off does not make sense. Second off I have proof he's not. Laxus in all his drawings has a slash on his right eye, not his left, and it is in a thunderbolt shape, not just a thin line. So if someone knows who this is, um, Please type it in the comments, but I've I don't think it's anyone we know. It's not Makarov. Um, it can't be anyone we know because, um, as far as I can tell, uh, it couldn't be Laxus because he's too young. I mean, he's too he's too old in this one already. And all the other characters, it was mentioned that this this panel was 104 years ago. Well, Mavis is dead, obviously, but. The other three are super super old and in the panel as we see him as we see them, they are just founding the fairy tale guild and they are already like twenty, maybe even thirty years old, probably like thirty years old. So this can't be Laxus. Uh, Makurakov, who is the current uh, guild master of fairy tale, is super super old and he was not even a founder, so this can't be Laxus because Laxus is still pretty young as of now and that's all I have to say for that moving on to fairy tale I really think this is the this chapter was the the start of the arc technically it started long ago maybe like one and a half chapters ago when they set out on this adventure but now they have gotten to the actual site they're taking it in there's conflict going on this is this the real start to this arc and as you can see this the tree fellow from last chapter is pretty amazing I mean he this he sent them like at least at least 10 miles away I, probably thousands of miles away to this location and you can see this giant tree just growing out of uh, out of the ground to get to that location that must have taken a lot of tree and to do that requires probably mass amount of mage power. However, it's pretty much not even acknowledged by the fairy tale gang. They do say it was fast and it was amazing magic, but other than that, not very acknowledged. Regardless, I guess um, we move on to the whole story. So, from the drawings, it kind of looks like everything is everything in this frozen town is somewhat aged and it looks like a marble white stone that's cracked all over it doesn't look like ice and maybe that's just because the drawings are in black and white the manga is black and white um, I'm not sure until we see the anime we don't know and so it turns out Natsu boom his flames don't work which is saying something because Natsu is so strong then uh, Grey tries he can't melt it either so this is some next level ice stuff and Gray says it reminds him of certain ancient magic he's once experienced so 
This is high level magic. And then we come across another interesting point that we should note down, which is we bump into these thieves and they mention that this ever dying, undying flame is super S class, not just S class, super S class. And I believe how it works is um, a, um, there's like A, B, C, D, E class, and then S class is above A. And I think how it works is some S class missions take like a year. And then some super S class missions take like 10 years. And then above that is missions called, R missions called, um, 100 year missions. So super S class is pretty high up there. And 100 year missions are literally missions that will take 100 years to finish, which is pretty much your entire lifespan. You can see just from last chapter that this guy is like roughly 120 years old and he's almost about to die from old age. And so, yeah, we've seen before, uh, again, I forgot his name, but the guy who's like the strongest person in fairy tale and even stronger than Makarikov, um, the guy who's the father to the girl in the who the girl in fairy tale who drinks a lot of beer um, he went on a 100 year mission as we've seen and could not even do it despite being so strong um, and it took him three years to do that to just travel there so that's saying something anyhow we see here these treasure hunters and so we now know this is super S class quality but again referencing Toriko we know that the ranking can sometimes either be because of the fighting capabilities the defensive capabilities or just the handling of the actual goal ingredient so maybe it's only super S class because as they've mentioned before it's always been guarded by these giants who live in this village but now that they're frozen it's free to, for the taking is it really super S class quality now or is it just like regular quality you just go up and take the flame we don't know yet we don't know how hard it is to handle this flame so my thinking is it's it's a little bit of, a little bit of both that's my predictions uh, the giants guarding it is the reason why no one's been able to get come close to this uh, treasure before and it's also partially because once you get the fire it's very hard to handle and carry around and so that's what they say that's what these treasure hunters say they judging from this panel right now uh, of the treasure hunters they all have the same symbol so they all come from this the same guild and the guild's name is Sylph Labyrinth which is a treasure hunter guild and this is stated to be different from mage guilds so these people may not have mage abilities they might they may or may not be as strong in fighting capability as any mage guild or fairy tale to say the least and so it, they're called sylph labyrinth and we get three new characters most likely judging from what's said later in the chapter uh, they are of no consequence compared to fairy tale so they're probably pretty weak the one thing they do have is moonshine which is a reference to a very back long ago arc about how you can you can melt or disable any spell with this but that doesn't mean that they're that great fighting capability wise or anything else they just obtain this item somehow for their own uses so they're taking moonshine along to melt the eternal flame and then they'll somehow take the flame away um, they do say don't underestimate our abilities but later in the chapter as we see with Minerva they don't they don't even care about this treasure hunter group because they think they are so weak compared to fairy tale so I'll reference that later but essentially I'm predicting these guys to be super weak and so pretty much this flame is regarded as like the one of the the epitome of one of the best treasures to obtain by treasure hunters so we see we're going to see some conflict because the fairy tale members who have traveled here want to get this done they they want to they they're trying to chase this treasure hunter group to to get the moonshine themselves because 
they can't, um, there's no way they can melt the flames. And I don't think it's called Moon Giant, it's called like, um, Moon Gliss or something. Let me get the, let me get the, the, the page where it mentions which, um, what flame it is. It's either Moonshine or Moon Gliss or something like that. Regardless, oh, it's called uh, Moon Drip. Moon Drip is what it's called. Regardless, we move on to the next part, which is the final part and the most interesting, you could say. First, you see this like strange bird with one eye. I don't know, it's just a new land. Uh, but we see people from a new dark guild. And the thing is, here's the thing. It's Minerva and this new figure. This new figure looks pretty badass. He has like this, this like cloth that covers his mouth. And the cloth has a picture of like a mouth with spikes. So it's kind of like he has this mouth, but he doesn't. And then his whole outfit looks really cool. And he has a symbol on his head here. And so what it seems is that these are from, these are two people from different dark guilds, new dark guilds. And maybe I can do the wiki and find out which dark guilds, but it's, it's of little importance. You can find that yourself if you're really interested. But he has a symbol here that's like on his hair. And it's kind of like a power symbol, like something you'd see on like, um, an Apple product or something like the power symbol and then Minerva has one on her stomach and they are different so I'm assuming they're from different dark guilds and they've come together because dark guilds form an alliance to do something of dark guild quality probably stealing a forbidden ingredient or forbidden magic of some sort and they're taking it for themselves and it's illegal and so they're colluding to take this and they pretty much say we, we don't even have to care about the treasure hunters because they're weak let's focus on fairy tale they will be a problem and then it's revealed that the girl is Minerva so first and foremost these guys are strong why because I'm pretty sure they are the the tree guy from last chapter mentioned how he despite being one of the ten saints there's Countless others who are much stronger, to him, much stronger than him throughout the land, and even stronger ones beyond this continent. So they are now beyond the the continent he was in. And Minerva, although she lost Fairy Tail, the fair the um, Mage games, she was pretty strong throughout. She used a lot of dirty tricks, but that's the thing regarding these characters. They have the advantage in that they can use dirty tricks to win whereas others with good quality cannot so that ups their fighting capability slightly in terms of Minerva in fighting strength I don't think she matches out as we can see in terms of fair in the mage the mage um, tournament games as we just saw uh, Minerva ended up losing to Urza in the mage games so I'm thinking she's not that strong right now Urza can take her out again no problem but we have the, his companion which I presume to be much stronger than Urza, otherwise they pose no threat to fairy tale. So by the confidence and cockiness in the dialogue, um, we know that first off Minerva has joined a new guild and it's a dark guild, it's called Succubus Eye. And then we see the symbol which is the symbol on her stomach. So she's renounced her old guild of Sabretooth after losing the mage tournament and now she has this new one. And she's like, you will address me as milady. I still, I still think Urza's gonna like defeat her easily. I highly doubt she thinks she's grown stronger by that much in such a short time after being owned by Urza just by joining a dark guild. Sure, she might develop new dark powers. Doesn't mean she like her power just boosted exponentially. But by the cockiness of their dialogue, it's assumed that this guy he's with is hella strong, and he's going to just. You know, he can probably take on Urza and Minerva at the same time, despite despite you know Minerva being on the same team as him. So, I, I'm I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. Most likely, they will pose a threat. This will not be a simple arc to finish. 
and we'll see what happens. Subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and share. Peace.